All right, so there's a few things that I want to go ahead and accomplish in today's video, and it's mostly towards you know new content creators that are trying to uh, come up on the platform, whether it be from streaming, making videos, you know, content creation and stuff. I kind of started dabbling in a little bit of uh, content creation, like education, doing product reviews, and you know, and on the side I do play video games and I do stream, and I used to stream on Twitch, and now I'm starting to stream on Kick. And I starting to see a lot of drama, I guess, or stuff being um, brought up, whether it be on social media platforms such as YouTube or Twitter, um, or just between uh, people on Kick and people on Twitch talking about each other. And I feel like there's a lot of misinformation being brought up and being told to you know people who have uh, lesser numbers when it comes to content creation or those who are inspiring to be content creators i kind of want to go ahead and give my thoughts and opinions and try to make sure that there's actually good information given to you know those people and not just everybody listening to a whole bunch of misinformation from people who are irrelevant to the topic in which of uh, we're going to talk about today so with that being said my name is squidhead joe welcome back to the fish tank go ahead and specify that I'm not talking about those content creators like they're they don't know what they're talking about or something like that obviously bigger content creators are there for a reason either it's excellent marketing as far as hiring people to have them do everything and all they do is sit down and you know stream or record videos or something like that but they have a team around them that know about algorithms they know when to upload what to upload they have an editing team you know stuff stuff like that maybe a camera camera person or you know photo editor you know stuff like that where they're not really doing anything other than being I guess what you would call the face of the content whereas they have a team around them and I think that affects a lot of these bigger content creators whereas they're so far removed and out of touch of what's actually taking place in content creation because they have a team around them and them them they themselves haven't done anything as far as analytic work or any kind of research into content creation for a while because they've been big and they blew up in an era where you could just sit down and record and not really edit and just post videos or whatever or just live stream for hours and that's how you got big nowadays you have to have stuff that's overly edited um a whole bunch of i guess su subtitles and and you know you have to do the TikTok and instagram and facebook and youtube shorts and all this stuff or whatever and you have to know you know analytics and like i said when to post and what topics and stuff to to cover and how to make engaging content a lot of them didn't grow up in that era and um, even nowadays there are one you know one person shows who you know do everything themselves and get the millions of views and stuff like that obviously that person is going to be um well off or well informed uh when it comes to you know education on said things to make them uh, make content creation viable for them to be able to pay bills and stuff um i think other people might actually have a team but they you know are well informed and everything but usually the people that come when it comes up to tick uh, when it comes up to kick and twitch the people that speak out against one another or wherever as far as like platform goes like oh you know twitch is bad or oh you know kick is bad or wherever for, and then they list their reasons a lot of these people that i've noticed either like i said they're just misinformed or they're making guesses just on how they feel because they heard so and so say it instead of actually sitting down and doing the research themselves and i feel like that is a bad thing to do when it comes to you being a new content creator and you you know start looking around and you find the popular people that are out there and then you notice hey they're streaming on this platform that platform there's so many platforms which one should i go with you know stuff like that and you're trying to do research grab information yourself because you want to you know to be well informed as a new like i said new content creator and then you get misinformation from these content creators who are big and and you know large and in charge making hundreds of thousands of dollars if not millions of dollars um every year or even every month and they're telling you well i won't switch i won't switch platforms or i won't stream on this platform anymore or i won't stream on that platform ever because x y and z and it's like 
none of your none of if you were in the space and you had a little bit of knowledge you would know that those remarks that they're saying or those comments that they're making don't make any sense at all because for one that's not the only issues and stuff with the platform two those issues don't make any sense unless you apply it to you know the larger uh, the, the smaller majority, which would be the ones that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars or, you know, millions of dollars. But if you look, step back and you look at it, the context of somebody who's just starting out, no viewers or little to no viewers, maybe uh, as far as Twitch goes, I would say like 15 b viewers and below who uh, maybe has a small community that doesn't mind moving platforms or something like that then that's when you should start taking a look and being like, maybe I should switch platforms. And I'll get to that in a second. I just wanted to clear up some misinformation or whatever. So take what you hear from a grain of salt, even from me when I get into my perspective on things, um, your experience might be different. You know, you might have the same values and morals and, and whatever as somebody else. But when it comes to the context of you're a content creator who is just starting out or maybe has low numbers as far as analytics goes, it might be more beneficial for you to consolidate down to one platform like just streaming on YouTube because you have YouTube shorts, which can do well if you know what you're doing. You have YouTube videos, which could be anywhere from five minutes to 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, hour long, wherever, if you can have that kind of engagement. And on top of that, you can stream. And YouTube has billions upon billions of, of potential people who can see you. You could stream video games and then do product reviews, talking headshots, vlogs, or something like that, a smaller form content. Um, and then as far as your shorts go, it could be a highlight from your streams and stuff like that, or something uh, from a review or something that you did and everything. And you could just do it that way. You don't have to branch out necessarily to all these different platforms. Now, some people have been able to do it with a team of people or just by themselves. And I've seen people who literally are just by themselves and they do it but that's because they understand the algorithm and everything like that and that kind of stuff takes time it takes um, effort and a lot of research and a lot of planning on a lot of things to see what's gonna be uh, what's gonna grab people's attention and keep them there as far as retention rate goes so again it's up to you as the new content creator to decide do you have the time to be able to do these type of things to do these research and and find out what works for you in your niche, whether it be video games or technology or education or uh, history, anything like that. And what you bring to the table, you have to find out what works for that subject that you want to cover, which even for people who have 15 you know, viewers or 20 viewers or wherever and less, it's hard for you to get discovered and get new people wherever because there's millions of people that are trying to stream as well as you and on top of that, you don't have that established community already, maybe on another platform to bring over to Twitch. Now, a lot of people know when up until recently that if you wanted to stream, there wasn't really that many sites. Yeah, we had stuff like Mixer, we tr you know, tried, you had Facebook that tried. YouTube is not there personally for me and what I look for. So that's why I'm not streaming on YouTube. Um, I just don't like the way they have everything set up to stream it. I wish they would figure it out. I don't like scheduling a stream or wherever. I just want to be able to sit down like how Twitch is or kick and you just hit go live or wherever you have your title, you have your category and everything right there. You have automations and everything that's really integrated really well. Whereas YouTube, most of the time you have to schedule. You can technically start a brand new live stream out of nowhere, but then you have to come up with a thumbnail and you have to come up with, it's just too much to to just be able to sit there and stream for like two hours so hopefully in the future they can update it and get it a little bit better but as far as right now if you want to stream on youtube you can look into that but i would suggest streaming on a different platform if that's something that you really want to do now streaming like i said over twitch it's nowadays it's just it's because it's so popular that everybody knows that that was the place to stream that you can find so many people streaming and not really get a lot of viewers the viewer to streamer ratio is just it's not there as far as being healthy and being a new content creator and trying to get people and you could do stuff like i said maybe uh, stream on tiktok as well as you're streaming on twitch community from tiktok or youtube or something like that over to twitch if they were willing to move over and watch you on a different platform um, in my personal opinion 
I would say even doing that, it would be hard for newer content creators. So I would suggest, you know, streaming on kick um, for one, if you do get established and you do start to see some revenue, obviously the, the payout is going to be a little bit better than obviously uh, Twitch. And then on top of that, it's a newer platform. So from my experience, I'm getting around the same amount of viewers I was getting on Twitch on kick. And I've seen personally, my other, my friends that have moved over from uh, Twitch to kick, their numbers have gone up or whatever, kind of somewhat substantially. I've seen people who, you know, had five viewers on Twitch um, would go over to kick and they have 15, 20, 30 viewers or whatever, depending on how long they stream. Um, I'm not sure about the analytics or whatever. I know they've been tweeting out about, you know, viewer bots and people doing stuff or whatever, and they're trying to crack down on everything. And that's another thing that's actually a positive is that they're actually being keeping up to date with people on Twitter. And they're trying to implement changes and stuff like that to make the platform a little bit better uh, for content creators and um, people who are trying, you know, streaming out for the first time or, you know, making the switch over to kick, which is another positive that we're not really seeing from Twitch. And at the end of the day, both platforms are businesses. They want to make as much money as possible. So obviously they're going to want to uh, implement things that are going to keep you know the streamers there to keep streaming or wherever and one of the best ways to do that is look at your competition see what they're not doing and implement those things so that's you know obviously you, i think one plus of of kick over twitch and that's why i say you know if you're starting out or you have low numbers on twitch and you're not really you're struggling with discovery maybe you're not you maybe don't have the time really to do all the stuff to really blow up under the platforms and bring people into your live streams, but you still want to live stream and you're still wanting that viewer number to go up. I would suggest, you know, testing out kick and just, you know, it's, it's not that hard to switch over or wherever I've done it personally. And, um, I think that it will benefit you in the long run. Now, with that being said, I will say that there is some drawbacks to being on kick. And the reason why I'm, one of the reasons why I'm making this video is not only to, you know, hopefully discourage any kind of misinformation out there or just uh, to encourage you not to listen to any of that information or whatever from people who don't know what they're talking about. Um, I would say there are some drawbacks. One of the drawbacks is, is that it's an early platform. So you're going to see some pains of being an early adapter. One is, is that I've only found maybe one uh, bot, I guess you could say, that will help you out with your live streams that actually works on kick. And um, you'll see the pains of that where you don't have stream out elements, stream labs, uh, any other streaming services or anything like that, new or old, that has an integration with maybe YouTube, um, and uh, Twitch and makes things more automated and, and easier for your live streams, you don't really see that on kick. And again, from my knowledge, I've only seen one bot, maybe some other ones out there, but one that's you know somewhat established and uh, somewhat easier to, to manipulate and do what you need to do uh, to get your timers, your commands, your title, like all this stuff or whatever, sub goals, everything, um, working on your stream, it seems to only be one. And uh, that's kind of, eh, especially since it's not the well developed, I would say, as far as, you know, in comparison to Streamlabs or Stream Elements or something like that. And from what I've seen, Stream Elements is not even, doesn't even have plans to really involve itself with Kick as, as far as right now. So that's kind of a bumper, um, but it's easy to get yourself up and running. Like I said, you just have to do more manual work to get your live stream to run. But obviously once you set it, you can almost forget it. Uh, a Discord integration with the with the bot and everything like that. So people will still get those notifications when you go live. Um, so that's nice. But with OBS, I've noticed that uh, some of the custom browsers to in, in order to put up activity, like if somebody follows you wherever to have that activity list um, to have you know your chat and everything like that it can be a really hard i guess to uh get that in obs however what i found is that i would go to my creator dashboard on kick i would copy the url and set up a custom browser doc in o an obs and just paste that uh, link in there and i'll have access to everything my viewer account uh, stream preview all that stuff whoever right there in obs um so that's the way i solve that issue uh just because for some reason, OBS and those links to kick and stuff like that just don't really seem to mesh 
So again, you, a lot of those early adopter pain staking issues with that. So again, that's something that you have to keep in mind, but you can find workarounds. And like I said, once you set it up, you can pretty much forget it. Um, it's just early adapter pains. Like I've previously stated, Kick is trying to do stuff that Twitch wouldn't do or took forever to do or just plain out haven't got us a, a word or reason why or they just do the complete opposite of what you know the content creators want. My problem is is that even though Kick is doing this stuff, we're still having issues and problems. Uh, one is is that a lot of people talk bad, especially even on the Twitch side, would talk bad about Kick about the gambling and um, the pervert the perversion or wherever of having pretty much softcore porn being streamed on the website. Now, with that being said, Kick has done this thing and then tweeted out and everything. I haven't been able to see it on the mobile app. The mobile app is is garbage. It needs a lot of work, and I think they're already well aware of that, but it needs a lot of work. And I think that um, hopefully they will you know, make it better. Um, I'm hoping that maybe sometime in the future they will have an app for consoles as well, but I don't know if that's even in the works or even a relevant idea, but the mobile app sucks. Uh, just experiences with issues, glitches, uh, timed outs, crashes, everything like that is just terrible. Um, but at least on the PC side of things, they do have an option where you could turn off gambling and the, the bikini pool stuff or wherever. But the problem is, and even if I go to the website right now, I'm not going to put it on the video because I'm pretty sure YouTube would age restrict it or something like that. But soft corn porn is just moved from, you know, the bikini, uh, you know, pool stuff or wherever over to just chatting. There is a big streamer who pulls in 2000 to 4000 uh, viewers for whatever reason. People, you know, instead of going to get it for free, they just want to pay and just watch that ugly stuff um, for whatever reason. Um, I just don't understand why it's needed to be on a platform. Like I stated earlier, I know these platforms are businesses, so they want to keep the biggest streamers or wherever who are going to bring in revenue, sex sales. So obviously they're going to advertise that stuff on the front page and everything, but they went ahead and gave those people the option. So all those people did was just go to just chatting. That's all they did. If they were business oriented and they knew people were going to turn off that stuff, all they did was go to just chatting to get uh, even more people to come and watch their stuff. And they will advertise, you know, their porn websites or wherever in the title of their streams and everything. And I think in order for Kick to, you know, rectify this, because me personally, I, it, you can do what you do. You know what I'm saying? Make your money however you want to make your money. I don't have a problem with you making your money. My thing is, is that I'm not here on the platform for that. I'm not going to those websites for that. I am going for gaming content, maybe to chat with some friends or, you know, new streamers or something like that who are actually just doing just chatting, you know, and actually engaging with the community in a healthy way and everything. And having those kind of things popping up wherever, especially having a newborn son and a wife, I do not want to have to sit there and specify that I'm not watching that stuff. That's just the website, you know, whatever. It would nice to it would be nice to have an option to maybe turn off uh, or have it set to default when you make your account or something like that to where you have to go in and actually manually turn it on mature content have that stuff marked as mature content i know myself i stream and i have the mature content turned on for 18 uh, years older plus stuff like that and i know some friends do because you know we cuss and stuff like that and live streams can get a little ragey and everything so it will probably hurt some people who do that kind of stuff. But I think having those people have to put up some kind of R rated or X rated content or something like that and be tagged with that stuff. And if people don't want to see that stuff, just, you know, block all those channels or, you know, don't let me see that kind of stuff or whatever. Yeah. And then I know it's possible because we've seen it with the casino, like I said, stuff, the gambling streams, and we've seen it with the pool stuff or whatever being blocked or whatever and taken away. So you don't see that stuff. 
but having people evade that kind of stuff that's kind of what we've seen on twitch where you know people be banned for certain stuff but they do ban evasions or you know they only get banned for a day and while wow, this person got banned for a week and you know people implementing stuff and trying to do stuff to get around so they can do what they're doing on kick freely they did random stuff wherever to be able to do it on twitch and now they moved over to kick and it's in my personal opinion ruined the platform just because of what i want you know a platform to be i don't want a gaming platform or a streaming platform that's not strictly you know for that stuff it be targeted as co for content creators or you know streamers and and you're thinking typically most of the time you're thinking like product reviews you know sitting around talking to people like at, like you would do at a coffee shop or something like that maybe some editing maybe some um you know photoshop or something like that video games and everything and all you see is, a, is it's just a sea, a wall of uh, soft corn porn being streamed on the site right next to all this other stuff. And I don't understand when this mix happened. And I don't understand why these companies are allowing things like this to happen on their platforms. Every time, you know, st a streaming platform comes out, it just seems like it's just engrossed with that stuff. And in my personal opinion, like I said, I don't believe it's be it belongs on websites like Twitch and Kick. I don't think Kick will ever do anything about it, honestly, because like I said, it's a business, even Twitch. That's why I think they're so iffy and people complain about it, but they're so iffy because those people are bringing so much money to the platform because people are sitting there in their live streams and stuff like that, throwing hundreds of thousands of dollars or wherever a month or a week or whatever, for whatever reason, just wasting their money and given to these people and these platforms are taking a cut you know what i'm saying maybe not so much on kick but even on twitch you know they're taking half or, or whatever so in my personal opinion like i said that's where i think a lot of people should probably be arguing against kick um as far as taking that standpoint because of all the stuff like that that's happening but for whatever reason it doesn't really happen that much um i haven't seen anybody say it i've seen people say well you know I don't know how I feel about the platform or wherever they'll do use vague terminology and usually they're against the whole gambling and everything and it's like that's not the only issue with the platform so the big takeaways is is pretty much if you're okay with you know having the early pains of being an early adopter um, as far as like maybe apps and stuff not working on your phone or whatever and having to do workarounds and really bare bones utility for having um, stuff set up for your stream, not integrations like Stream Deck integrations. Um, there's nothing like that set up for Kick. It's just usually just a bot and that's it. So you have to deal with that kind of stuff. That's just, you know, the way it is. Um, and then on top of that, you also have to deal with the fact of, like I said, softcore porn being streamed right next to you on the platform. And I would say I've seen a lot more um, racism hate speech whatever you want to call it stuff like that on the platform I, I guess more toxic people wherever I've seen it I know it exists on Twitch um, but my personal experience as far as watching and only streaming for a little bit on the platform wherever it seems about the same because I've been streaming on Twitch for years and now going over to kick and it hasn't even I think been a month with streaming and I've probably been watching kick for about I'll say about a month and a half to two months or wherever and the amount of people trying to get people to say racist things you know while typing a clever sentence or wherever so the person speaks it out loud or outright blatantly you know calling people you know racial slurs or something like that or you know follow for follow stuff like that and then like I said the provocative stuff on the front page and everything people already you know trying to find a way to go around people trying to block that content because they don't want to see it mega offenders or wherever are just blatantly on the front page and it's like you know this person should be in a different category but you're allowing them to do that and you're allowing them to be on the front front page as well because you decide who's on the front page and it's just I, I don't know and then some people that they're signing as of late and everything are being kind of i would say rude in a sense of they're doing stuff purposely to get you aggravated so you interact with their content in order for you know the stuff to explode like you will see people who purposely 
you know, try to start an argument because that in makes that person engage in the comment section or on their tweets or something like that. It gets their views and impressions up. It gets more eyeballs on them. So they become more famous because they're purposely putting up stuff or wherever during this controversy thing or wherever. And like I said, that leads to a lot of misinformation because people don't care about actually giving accurate information. They just care about who is looking at them and how much they can uh, fester and feed off of this stuff in order to build themselves up as a community and just fuck over the little guy. So with that being said, that's just my thoughts and opinions of this whole, you know, kick versus Twitch thing. Hopefully I've explained it a little bit as far as my viewpoints and stuff on it. Um, I have been enjoying myself streaming over there. Uh, you know, I have 10 followers or whatever, maybe peak at five viewers or something like that. And it's been interesting and it's been great. Um, it, again, it's about the same or wherever when I used to stream on Twitch. Uh, so the experience is, like I said, is about the same. And as long as I just focus on myself and my stream, everything is fine. It's just like I said, when I want to, you know, tell people about the platform or something like that, and I want to encourage people to try something new and maybe help them out as far as making the right decision between twitch or kick and stuff like that and i see a lot of people trying to do the same thing that are being 100 honest i find it hard to actually be able to do that when there's porn being streamed on the website it's just you are so close you are so close kick but with that being said my name is ben squidhead joe and i hope you guys enjoyed your time in a fish tank i'll see you guys in the next one Take care. God bless you and yours. Deuces, everybody. Much love.